A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, beginning at verse 14, and these are words of Jesus. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people loved the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. This is a well-known passage for those of you who come to the Book of Common Prayer Communion services that we have in the Benefice. You'll recognise this as one of the comfortable words, or at least containing some of the comfortable words which I read out at that service. And it's a well-known passage because it's understood as containing within it very much the core of the Gospel, the core of the great message that the Church has to proclaim to the world. Is this message that Christ has come into the world in order to save people. More than that, it's that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son. There is no other. Christ is the only begotten Son of God. All of this is an initiative of God. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son. And this is an important emphasis, and Jesus is keen to point this out in this passage. Because what he's saying here is that we are already condemned. And yet Christ has been sent into the world so that those who believe in him will not be condemned. What does he mean in that? What does he mean by that? Well, what he's trying to say is that in our normal state, in the way that we are now, then we are lost. None of us have kept all of the Ten Commandments perfectly. None of us have even kept the first of them. Do we really love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul and mind and strength, as Jesus summarised it? Well, we haven't, of course. And so we lie condemned in that way. We have broken that law. But in Christ, well, God did something about this. Jesus is sent so that should we believe in him, then we will not be condemned. And so this is something akin to a rescue mission, It's something which we might see illustrated in the work of a lifeboat. Those who are in the water, the cold waters, are condemned already. They will, after a period of time, die of exposure. But those who accept the lifeboat, those to whom the lifeboat comes and and they reach up and they're pulled up into the lifeboat, well, they are saved. And so Christ comes to save Christ comes saying that should we trust and believe in him, then we will be saved. If we do nothing, well then we will lie condemned already. This is the great gospel of Christ. This is what we look forward to in Good Friday and Easter Sunday. As we celebrate the fact that God's love meant he didn't leave us bobbing around in the water. He didn't leave us as those simply to die condemned. But rather he sent his son so that we might be brought all the way back home. And so the question this passage asks, the question which lays open at the end of it, is simply this. God has sent his Son. Will you believe in him?